Configuring Pixis is fairly straightforward. Um, like most network management programs, the first thing we need to do is add a device. Now, you can add devices by right clicking in the center area or by selecting the add from the menu at the top or by adding from this button at the bottom. Now, I'm going to add a Jakarta device, which in this case means an iMeter. Um, I put the IP address in, the admin username, and the read write community string. In the advanced options, I can change ports if needs be, but I'm, I'm just using the defaults. First thing it'll do is go and find the device and make sure that it is on the network, pingable, and then the second thing it does is it starts pulling in the data for all of the sensors. So what we should see here, yep it's pingable, it's gone green. Host status is the ping task, which I'll rename that in a moment. And then within the next few seconds I should get the list of sensors. And there we go. Now it's come up as red because some of the sensors are in a alarm state and this information, thresholds, sensor names, everything is taken from the iMeter so you're not configuring in two separate places. Now that I've got it added I can simply drag the whole device out which will give me two tables, um, an event log and a summary of all the sensors connected, what their status is by colour what the current reading is and obviously the host. Now this table can have sensors from multiple hosts um, but because I've just got one at the moment all the IP address is the same. What I can also do is pull out for an individual sensor I can pull out a graph. Now I have no data at the moment because I've only just added it so this graph legend isn't correct. Once it's got some data these numbers will correct and we'll see a line start appearing on this graph. Um, I can say we want to now as you can see my problem now is space you're limited really only by the amount of screen space you've got I'm using a fairly small monitor for a, a recording area so obviously if, I, if this was maximized on a bigger monitor I'd have more screen space to use but what I can also do is adjust the size of these down to something a little bit smaller now this will be nice for the video, but for real-time monitoring you want it bigger so you can actually see what's going on. You'll notice that this desktop has a red box at the top. Now this colour displays the worst state on this desktop and we can have multiple desktops so if you've got five, six, seven desktops you can see if one of them goes red and you can click on it and see what the problem is. Um, on different desktops we can do different things like for example I might want all my graphs on one desktop to save space because they don't need to be looked at all the time really you just want the alarm information um, or I can create a desktop that is adding a map for this device so if I go to my maps you'll see I've already added some maps here so let's say for example this is a, a data center so we pull out the floor pan map Let's maximize that and then if we go back to the sensors I can now drag and drop my sensors wherever I need them to be on this map just to give you some examples really now you'll notice that they have default icons in this case little circles the colors match the text here so black for normal red for alerts and uh, you'll see the reds flashing. If I hover over each one you can see what the sensor is, what the state is and which host it's on. Also if you right click and go to properties you can then do some pretty neat things like for example I want to add some images in here. Uh, there's a, some default images that come with Pixis but you're quite welcome to add your own they're just little GIFs or little JPEGs. Uh, let's see this. A bigger one if it's a critical. Yeah, just something representative of an alarm. And I'll do a 
water drop when it's all normal. You can add some text, so the, the, this will be text either underneath, on top of, left and right of the icon, so I'll leave it underneath. The text, I can either type my own text in here, or you can click on the macro button and do things like pull out the description. This is the name of the sensor. You'll see there's a, a few macros available to you here. Oops, that didn't add. There we go. Um, and then I can apply this to all sensors of, of a certain type based on what's on the the eye meter basically. Click finish and there we go. I've got my icon that I've set, the name of the sensor that this is, so it's humidity one. And it is in an alarm state because that was the alarm icon that I used. Um, what you can also do with maps is nest them. So if I have a nice UK map and my DC is down here somewhere I can then set up some information for the map so I'll leave it with standard images let's go with green for normal everyone likes to see green and then again let's call this data center or, or give it a location name or whatever you wanted to and again it can be applied to things but there's no point doing this because obviously this isn't a sensor it's a map and I don't want to apply it to every map so I'm not going to select that but there we go a data center circle and it's red at the moment because if I double click it to see the map it's got errors and alarms on it and then I click this button here to go back to the top map so I can display a map on a desktop or I can nest maps on a desktop now let's get rid of this one because we've nested them and what you can also do is if I go back to this one we don't want the graphs because I've put them on my second desktop but we may want the map and then if I resize this to something a little bit smaller so on the desktop for this location I've got its eye meter with its sensors I've got its map and I've got its system log. Um, I know this doesn't look all lovely and lined up, but I can do that. Y you see what I mean? You can you can drag things around, you can line them up, you can resize them, you can create your desktop how you need it to be. Um, and then on my map desktop, if I rename this to, I can have a, a top view of the map with potentially multiple locations depending on what we're monitoring here um, and this view can be the main view up on the screen so if anything changes color uh, let's call this data center as well so it all corresponds if anything were to change color like this one going red you can either double click it to see the larger map or you can go to the relevant desktop to see the actual information fairly simple. I'll come back to this in a moment. Now you'll see some of these figures have corrected um, and we're getting lines appearing. So we'll, as I talk more I'll come back to this later and we'll see a bit more graphing info here.